<laughs> there you go. That was good. That was good. You got it. Natural. There you go. Straight from the horse's mouth. Thank Did you. You call me a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I've called you worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>Hi everyone, today we're talking about paediatric elbows and we're going to start off by talking about interpreting x-rays. I'm here with my friend Anish. Anish, can you tell us about this? I can indeed. So this is an AP elbow, okay, so an AP radiograph of the elbow. Uh, and these can be more complicated than people actually give them credit for. So in terms of when you're looking at this, the first thing you want to know is the age of the child, okay. And the reason being is you're going to look for the capitellum, the radial head, the internal epicondyle, the trochlear, uh, the olecranon and the external epicondyle, okay? And then you look at their age. So they should be, and it depends which books you read, but it could be one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11, or two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12. So once you know the age of the child, you know what you're looking for, and you can actually age the child themselves. And can I just ask you, I always learned crittle. And yeah. when you said, when you kept saying crito, I thought you were pronouncing it like someone pronouncing abdomen. <laughs> or antibiotics, but this is actually a I am thing. very posh, actually. Yeah. Very posh. Tell me but about the E. So the E is external epicondyle. Okay? okay, so yes, you are right. In this country, we talk about the lateral epicondyle, so crito or crito. So this but is from our, from our American friends? They are indeed, and the rest of the world. It's just us, it's just okay. us who use the L. Classic. Right, so then you're gonna look at this and you're gonna say, okay, so I can see the capitellum there, so they must be at least one or two. Mm -hmm. I can see the radial head there. And really importantly, you wanna make sure that they line up. Okay, a line through the radial head should go through the capitellum on your AP view. Uh, the other thing to do is really look for the soft tissue swelling. Okay, so we've got the capitellum, we've got the radial head. Next, internal epicondyle. And you look here and you think, well, hang on, there's a load of soft tissue swelling there. There's got to be something going on here. And you can see something just there. Is that your internal epicondyle, the medial epicondyle? It's not clear, right? So is it, could you no. say, well, maybe the child's not old enough, so it hasn't ossified? That's true, okay, so what you could do if you're not sure, and remember, the other thing to remember with this is they don't always ossify in this pattern. The right. majority of children do. So, if you're not sure whether there should be a medial epicondyle, you're going to x-ray the other elbow, okay? Oh, nice. Um, and then that's it, really. But what you do want to remember, okay, so a lot of people forget when they're looking at these kids that the whole thing here is cartilage, and that's really important when you're gonna deal with some of the fractures. So if you're looking for a lateral condyle fracture, for example, you wanna make sure that there isn't a fracture line coming through here, which is difficult because you can't see cartilage on an X-ray. So that's why we're gonna talk about some of the other things we do when we wanna see those things. And I must say the cartilage thing is something that's really blown my mind when I first kind of realized how much there was. Because you see a little fracture and you think, and you know, for me, you just yeah. see a little fracture and you, and you see a little thing like that, or you see a little crack that you go, well, what's the issue? There's no biggie there at all. Yeah. And then you realize after it's massive, as we'll see in some of the later pictures. Yeah. So that's your AP view, okay? Then you're gonna move on to your lateral view. One of the things you wanna do first is look at how well your lateral view's been taken, because that is gonna influence, um, you know, whether you pick up some fractures or not. Now, the first thing I'd say is you wanna look for your anterior cortex, and you're gonna look for your posterior cortex. You should see them converge like this into an hourglass onto the epicondyle. So that'd be your supracondylar ridge. And you can see here, you can't see that brilliantly. So that's just yeah. something to bear in mind. So there's but a degree of rotation in this one. There is. Right. Um, but you know, that's life, okay? These guys are like that. So the other things you're gonna look for are your anterior humeral line and does it cross the capitellum? Okay, so if you've got a supracondylar fracture, if it's an extension type, the capitellum will be behind that mm -hmm. line. Okay. The other important line that you want to look at is, again, through your radial neck and into your capitellum. They should intersect. Whatever position, whether there's some flexion, extension, those lines should intersect, so the radial neck and the capitellum. And if it doesn't, then what are we looking at there? Well, it could be, so what you're really looking for is a montegia. Yeah. Okay, you want to make sure you're not missing a montegia variant. And if you're seeing problems there, obviously you need an x-ray of the whole forearm. And one of the things you also want to do is check, is there any ulnar bowing? Because you can get plastic deformation. So if you see a problem here, you've got to check the whole length of the ulna. And one of the things that we'd say is if you've seen a kid in A&E, you think there's an elbow problem, and A&E say, oh, look, but we've done an x-ray from wrist up to uh, the humerus, don't accept that. Make sure you get an elbow-centred view. Okay. Well, can I ask you one question? Yeah. So something that, that I'm fascinated by, 
are these things down here? Oh yeah. Can you tell us about these bad boys? Yes, yeah, so everyone gets really excited about the fat pads. So what you're looking at is elevation of the fat pad there because of fluid and elevation of the fat pad there. And when people see that and you've heard about the sail sign, mm. they say, oh, that could be an occult fracture. Um, the sensitivity and specificity is rubbish. Okay, and what you're going to do when we talk about some of the other elbow fractures, you'll see the most horrific fractures and you'll see no fat pads. So I don't think they're worth it. I think the soft tissue shadowing that we spoke about in the AP is much more important. It's often overlooked. Okay. The other thing to say is what you may have noticed is that. Okay, so that's your medial epicondyle. And when it displaces, it displaces usually anteriorly. But that's the kind of thing. So here you'd be looking at this body in the electron fossa thinking, well, what's going on there? So always be suspicious. And just matching it to this one, we can see that there was, you, you, were, you were concerned about something around here anyway, weren't yeah. you? And, and so that kind of just gives you further, more, further ammunition to uh, yeah, expect You're really something suspicious there. now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So this is quite interesting because I was not familiar with this hourglass concept, um, but you can, it's this thing here is what I'm assuming you're referring to. Yeah. I quite like that figure of eight, actually. But that's what you want to see. And actually, when you're doing your supracondylar fractures in theatres, mm. that's really important, okay? So, as I said, in real life, it, you're not going to send a child back just to get a true lateral. Uh, you know, somebody who's got a broken elbow isn't yeah. really going to comply. Fine. But when you're trying to make your decisions, and especially when you're in the operating theatre, you want to see this, because that's where your wire is going to be going. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. So, my kryptonite, is paediatric elbow arthrograms. Yeah. Can you talk us through this, please? Yes, yeah, so the arthrogram, okay, why are you doing that? So as we discussed at the beginning, you've got that massive cartilaginous onlock. Mm -hmm. A lateral condyle fracture is the articular surface disrupted. You can't see it on x-ray. People say, oh, you could get an ultrasound or an MRI scan. If you're dealing with a three or four year old, you'd have to give them a GA to get an MR. Yeah, it's just too much. Yeah, so then you might as well do this, okay? And then the other thing you're talking about is also the Montegia. Is there a problem? between your radius and your capitellum. So what you want to do, you know, when you guys do this in adults, awake, you're feeling for that triad. In these kids, I would just use II. Put the, the under uh, a proper anaesthetic, you're doing it with full prep and drape. And what you're going to do is find your radial neck and find your radial head coming in from here, aiming for there with your needle. And essentially, you're just bouncing it through. Okay, when you're in that space, you will know. What I tend to do is pop the needle in and then I get a lateral view. So. You get that picture, and here you can see that I've got my needle just in front of the capitellum. And when you're happy with that, what you do, go back to your AP and you inject your dye. The really important thing with that is what you can see there. Okay, there's a whole load of dye sitting behind the humerus. Yeah. And it's really tempting when you're in there, you get really excited. You think, I'm in the right place, I'm in the right place. I'll put all five or ten mils. Which is what I've done. And then you end up like this, yeah. and, you, and then you can't see... You, yeah, you can't see no, anything. No error, yeah. Okay, so actually the key is control that resistance. Okay, don't spurt and just put a small amount in, and then flex, extend the elbow, and then what you're going to see... Is and flex and extension is key, because that basically just, it just squirts it around and gets yeah. it around all the articular surface. And so what you can see here, so for example, this case was actually a Montegia fracture. You can see here that we've got our ulnar fracture there. Yeah. But this is lovely for me to see, okay? I've reduced the radial head it's in the right place. Yeah. So that's one way of doing your arthrogram, okay? Uh, and I'm a bit embarrassed to say, okay, I've been a consultant for nearly 10 years, um, and it was only this year, I was doing something with Fergal Monsell, we're discussing some cases, uh, and he talked about this, okay, the posterior approach um, through triceps, and it is really, really easy. I learned about it in about August, and I've done it three times since, I'm getting my regs to do it. Um, that looks really elegant, tell us how you do it. So basically, here you've got your elbow flexed, normally it's externally rotated, and then all you are doing, okay, is literally feeling the electron on and then just putting your needle straight through. So that's what you can see here. This is our needle coming straight through the back. And again, what you don't want to do is go straight into the actual capitellum itself, and it looks like I'm very, very close, but once you hit bone, withdraw just a little bit um, and then just put a small amount of dye. A couple of mil. Yeah, at most. Okay. Okay. And again, what you can see here really nicely is already our radial head. And if you look at how big your radial head is once you've outlined it, it's massive. Mm. And here, what you can see is the capitellum acidic nucleus, but look at that. Okay, that's the cartilaginous distal humerus there. Uh, and this it's is why the arthrogram. Now. Yeah, now it's starting to look important, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, uh, it looks familiar. Yeah. <laughs> and then, 
This is uh, what I think is really important for your lateral condyles, and this is where you need just a very small amount of dye. Okay. What you can see here is because of the injury, uh, there is some dye sitting here. We didn't put it there, we're not that rubbish. Okay. Mm. Um, but here, can you see, I'm going to try and outline it, but this really thin rim of dye that's just outlining that whole distal humerus. Okay. And then you can see your radial head just there. And so when you get this view, it is brilliant. So for here, you can say, okay, there is no significant fracture through the cartilaginous apophysis. Yeah. Because that's why we're doing it. I must say, I find it mind-blowing to think how much cartilage there is there. That it, and you can really underappreciate on the x-rays how much is going on there. I mean, it looks like a distal femur there, Neil. Yeah, so something, again, more important in your world, you, right? You've got my interest now. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant. Anish, when would you be looking to an orthogram? When should we? Yeah, so um, there's various reasons, okay? So one is if you're aspirating the elbow in theatres, let's say you think, okay, I'm dealing with a septic arthritis, you put the needle in, you aspirate, are you getting anything out? If you get nothing out, then you want to prove that you're in the elbow joint, so you pop a small amount of dye in, so you can say, look, I was in the elbow joint and there's nothing else there. That's one situation. And then the other emergency situation that the general trauma and orthopod surgeon needs to know about is for your fractures, okay? so. You're trying to find whether that cartilaginous radial head is lining up with the cartilaginous capitellum. If you don't do the arthrogram, it can be really difficult. Even when you do the arthrogram, you're sometimes thinking, well, is that quite right? That's one situation. And then the lateral condyle fractures. When we talk about that, you'll see that it is an intra-articular fracture, but your whole joint surface is cartilage. So if you don't do the arthrogram, uh, you won't be able to see that there is a fracture or displacement. You're looking for displacement through that articular okay. surface. And, and we're not saying that every supracondylar humerus that you do should be getting an arthrogram. So no supracondylar should. Perfect. Okay.